Like earlier said, when current is flowing, it is actually electrons that are flowing. In science, when an object like this is placed here, it is redundant. If I am to apply a force on it like that, it will move. This force that I'm exerting will cause this to move in a certain distance. And when this force moves through a certain distance, we say I have done work on it. Work has been done because the object has moved in a certain distance because of a certain force that has pushed it. That is why by definition we say that work is the product of force acting on an object and the distance covered by that object in the direction of a force. So it's the same with these electrons that are always flowing in wires. When they are flowing from one place to another, they are actually doing work. This work done with these electrons or charged particles is caused by the source of EMF, the electromotive force. So this current upon flowing is accompanied by conversions of electrical energy into other forms of energy. This energy conversion normally happens in the load. For example, if you connect a heater into an electric circuit, it means electrical energy is being converted into heat in the heater. That is a conversion of energy. If you connect a bulb like this one into a circuit, the the filament inside there is going to receive electric current. That electric current is going to heat up this bulb. When that electric current heats up that bulb, there is a conversion of energy from electrical to heat. So if I may state it in a different way, I'm saying that when you connect a light bulb into a circuit, electric energy is converted into heat due to the inherent resistance of the filament wire. And as a result, light is given off. Another example could be when you're turning a motor, the electrical energy is actually converted into mechanical energy or call it rotational mechanical energy. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is that as current flows through the load, energy is dissipated in the load. Now remember, these charged particles when moving, they do work. And this work is due to the potential difference across the terminals of the cell. So when some of this electrical energy is dissipated, it means some energy is lost by the charged particles in the process. It therefore follows that the energy being lost by the charged particles is equivalent to the electrical potential energy lost as it moves through, through the potential difference that exists between the input and output terminals of the device. Remember, this energy being lost is what we talked about earlier. For example, the energy dissipated as heat in the light bulb. And uh, so with this kind of background information, let's dive straight into um, the derivation of electrical energy expression coming up. Now, in order to derive uh, the expression for electrical energy and power, we will begin from the definition of potential difference. Potential difference is actually the work done in moving a charged particle from one point to another. So when a particle moves from one point to another, work is done. And that work that is being done is what we are calling potential difference. If I may repeat that again, potential difference is actually the work done in moving a charged particle from one point to another. And that is why we express it like this mathematically, that the potential difference is actually the work done per coulomb. This is Q. Q is representing charge. And so it's the charged particles that are moving. So the work that is done per coulomb is what we're calling the potential difference. And if you are to rearrange this, we make work, make it a flat equation. Work is going to be equal to Q times V. That's how we arrive to that expression. Now we know that um, actually current is the rate of flow of charge from here. We know that current is the rate of flow of charge, the Q dt, the rate of flow of charge. So when we make Q the subject of the formula, we shall end up with Q being equal to I times T. So this is how this comes to that Q is equal to I times T. So if we were to substitute for the value of Q, in that expression, we shall end up with work done being equal to Q, which is IT times V, right there. And in this case, the, dub, the, the, the time is always in seconds. The current, this is the current that is flowing through the load and it is always in amperes. Then this is the potential difference across the terminals of the load. 
and then this is the work done and definitely the work done is the same as the energy dissipated so that is why the work done is sometimes expressed as e e and work it's the same they are both in joules and it is the energy dissipated given by v i t now this is an expression for energy and this is how we derive the expression for energy by definition we know that power is the rate of doing work or call it the rate of dissipation of energy and now uh, it means that power is going to be equal to work done or energy dissipated divide that by the time taken in dissipating that energy so definitely our work done is vit like we had seen previously divide that by the time taken which is t this value of t cancels with that t and you remain with power being equal to v times i so now this expression for energy and this expression for power these two expressions work on any load now sometimes the loads that we may be dealing with may be resistors now when the loads where we are dealing with are resistors it means that we are supposed to introduce the component of resistance in it now these two expressions will work for any load however when we are dealing with loads that are having a component of resistance in them it means we're supposed to take account of that resistance and that takes us to our next derivation of formula so like I had earlier said, when the load we are dealing with is a resistor, it means that we are going to introduce the component of resistance in the expressions. These two are our, earlier, the, are our original expressions. The energy or the work done is going to be VIT. Then the power is current I times voltage. Now, if the load we are dealing with the resistor, we have two options. We can either use this equation, or I mean this formula or that formula. Or we can use this formula or that formula in our calculations now for this case if we can either use substitute for V we know that from Ohm's law that V is equal to I times R so if V is equal to I times R substituting for V here where you're seeing the blue marking V in the expression for energy V is equal to I times R then times I T which is right there times it so of course i times i is i squared then times r then times t and that brings us to our second expression that's how we get it or we can substitute for i and when we make i the subject of the formula in this expression we know that current i is equal to v over r so we substitute for i where there is the green thing v over r is substituted for i so e is going to be v which is right there times i which i is v over r times t and then we end up with our energy as v squared over r times t it's the same thing we shall do for power this is our original expression in case we need to substitute for i we simply say v uh, where the, the the green light is the green mark power is going to be equal to i which is v over r times v and then this v times v is v squared over r or if we want to substitute for v in this expression we shall say power is going to be current i times v, v which is i times r. Of course, i times i is i squared times r. And we get our second expression right there. So when we are dealing with electrical energy and power, the calculations, if we are dealing with a load that is a resistor, we shall simply pick on the appropriate formula and we use it in our calculations to get the answer that is required of us so as i conclude i should say that uh, when we're dealing with any kind of load work energy is equal to vit and then power is equal to iv this these equations will apply to any load however if the load is a resistor then we shall use v is equal to ir to introduce the r component in this and that's how we come up with these other two equations. So this other formula apply when the load we are dealing with is a resistor. Now, there are some other loads that such as like, for example, in devices such as a lamp, all the energy that is dissipated is converted into heat. In fact, the bulb gives light because of the heat. Since the heat is produced due to the inherent resistance of the filament, then these formulas will also apply to the bulb filament.